Audio Jungle. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, Marco here from Aviator Live CS and welcome back to my channel. Today we will review the last video part 3 of the hydraulic system on the Boeing 737-800NG. Now uh, we will review abnormals for the hydraulic system and we'll start with the checklist we have available on the QRH. I will pay more attention to uh, three of them, which is loss of system A, loss of system B, and the manual reversion. But I just want to mention this one. So low pressure, hydraulic pump low pressure. This is the condition. The hydraulic pump pressure is low. Overheat, hydraulic pump overheat condition. The hydraulic pump temperature is high. Now let's talk about the loss of system A. And this is where we are supposed to see if this is happening. In the flight control panel, we will see the low pressure light illuminated, and we will see the low pressure light illuminated for engine one and leg two on the system A. Condition, hydraulic system A pressure is low. System A flight control switch, confirm standby rudder. So we confirm and we select standby rudder. System A hydraulic pump switches both off. So we select these two switches off. Check the non-normal configuration landing distance tables in the performance in flight QRA chapter or other approved source. Nose wheel steering switch alternate plan for manual gear extension. Note when the gear has been lowered manually, it cannot be retracted. The drag penalty with the gear extended may make it impossible to reach an alternate field. So here you have a list of the inoperative items you will have if you lose system A. So let, let's review them. Uh, the autopilot A will be not, but autopilot B is available. Fly spoilers two on each wing in up. Roll rate and speed brake effectiveness may be reduced in flight. Normal landing gear extension and retraction in up. Manual gear extension is needed. Ground spoilers in up. Landing distance will be increased. Alternate brakes in up. Normal brakes are available. Engine 1 thrust reverse and normal hydraulic pressure in up. Thrust reverse is still available, but will deploy and retract at a slower rate, and some thrust asymmetry can be anticipated during thrust reverse deployment. Normal nose wheel steering in up. Alternate nose wheel steering is available. Checklist complete except deferred items. So you have to complete your deferred items, uh, the same checklist, approach checklist, and then it comes to the manual gear extension. So what we have to do, we need to put the landing gear lever off, manual gear extension handles pull. The up lock is released when the handle is pulled to its limit. Remember that. The related red landing gear indicator light illuminates, indicating up lock release. Wait 15 seconds after the last manual gear extension handle is pulled, landing gear lever down. So we complete the landing checklist. And this is about the loss of system A. Now, if we talk about the loss of system B, this is where we are supposed to see the low pressure light and flight control B, the low pressure light for LX1 and engine 2, and the B hydraulic pumps. So the condition is uh, the hydraulic system B pressure is low. So we'll put the system B flight control switch, confirm, and standby rudder. System B hydraulic pump switches both off. Plan a flat 15 landing. Set B-Ray 15 or B-Ray 5 if it applies. Plan to extend flaps to 15 using alternate flap extension. Note the drag penalty with the leading edge devices extended may make it impossible to reach an alternate field. Check the non-normal configuration landing distance tables in the performance in flight QRA chapter or other approved source. Do not arm the auto brake for landing, use manual brake. And here we have the list of inoperative items we will have with the loss of system B. Autopilot B in up, but autopilot A is available. Fly spoilers two on each wind in up. Roll rate and speed brake effectiveness may be reduced in flight. Yaw damper will be in up. Trailing edge flaps, normal hydraulic system in up. 
the trailing edge flaps can be operated with a, the alternate electrical system. Alternate flap extension time to flaps 15 is approximately two minutes. Leading edge flaps and slats normal hydraulic system in up. The leading edge flaps and slats can be extended with the standby pressure, but once extended, they cannot be retracted. Auto braking up, use manual braking. Normal brakes in up, alternate brakes are available. Engine two, thrust reversing normal hydraulic pressure in up. Thrust reversal will deploy and retract at a slower rate and some thrust asymmetry can be anticipated during thrust reversal deployment. Alternate nose wheel steering in up. Normal nose wheel steering is available. Checklist complete, except the fair items. Okay, so here in the different items, uh, when we do the descent checklist, just uh, pay attention, outer brake will be off, and the landing data, remember we are landing with flat 15, so we need to set V ref 15 or B ref eyes. We'll complete the approach checklist. Now we come here, and now we have to do the uh, alternate flap extension. And during the flap extension, set the flap lever to the desired flap position. Remember, 230 knots maximum during alternate flap extension. Alternate flap master switch, arm. Note, the landing gear configuration warning may sound if the flaps are between 10 and 15 and the landing gear are retracted. So what we usually do is we select flaps 10, we put the gear down, and then we continue to flap 15, just to avoid the landing gear configuration warning. The other note here says the amber leading edge flaps transit light stays illuminated until the flaps approach the flaps 15 position. The other note says operation within the lower amber airspeed band may be needed until the leading edge flaps transit light extinguishes. So we have a caution here. If flap asymmetry occurs, release the switch immediately. There is no asymmetry protection. And this is something very important to remember. We don't have a symmetry protection when we use the alternate flap extension. Alternate flap position switch, hold down to extend flaps to 15 on a schedule. As flaps are extended, it's slow to respective maneuvering speed. When we use the alternate flap extension, remember uh, we can read on FCOM volume one in the limitations section, and the non-AFM operational information, we can uh, read about the alternate flap duty cycle. It says when extending or retracting flaps with the alternate flaps position switch, allow 15 seconds after releasing the alternate flap position switch before moving the switch again to avoid damage to the alternate flap motor clutch. After a complete extend or retract cycle from 0 to 15 and back to 0, Allow five minutes cooling before attempting another extension. So that's the limitation we have here for the alternate flap extension. Now, if we continue with the additional deferred items, so we need to select uh, flap inhibit in the ground proximity flap inhibit switch, and then we complete the landing checklist and uh, remember flaps 15. Now let's talk about manual reversion or love of system A and B. This is where we are going to see five controls we we'll see the low pressure for system A and B. In the hydraulic pumps, we will see the low pressure for all the pumps. Condition, hydraulic system A and B pressures are low. System A and B flight control switches both confirm standby rudder. So we select the standby rudder on both of them after confirming. Yield damper switch on. System A and B hydraulic pump switches all off, all the switches off. Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Remember, in this case, we only have one hydraulic system available, which is the standby system. So this is a mayday call. Plan a flap 15 landing. Set B ref 15 or B ref ice. We'll continue with the checklist. Plan to extend flap 15 using alternate flap extension. Again, the track penalty with the leading edge devices extended may make it impossible to reach an alternate field. Plan for a manual gear extension. So as you can see, it's a, it's a very busy uh, situation for the crew. Uh, when the gear has been lowered manually, it cannot be retracted. The drag penalty with gear extended may make it impossible to reach an alternate field. We need to check the non-normal configuration landing distance tables in the performance in 5QRH chapter or other approved source. 
note, and this is also important, the crosswind capability of the airplane is greatly reduced. Do not arm the auto brake for landing. Do not arm the speed brakes for landing. On touchdown, apply steady brake pressure without modulating the brakes. Do not attempt to taxi the airplane after stopping. So here you have a list of all the items you have inoperative. In this case, both autopilots are inoperative. All flight spoilers inoperative. The trailing edge flaps, normal hydraulic system inoperative. Leading edge flaps and slash normal hydraulic system inoperative. Normal landing gear extension and retraction inoperative. Auto brake is inoperative. Ground spoiler is inoperative. Normal and alternate brakes inoperative. Remember, this is important. La on landing, apply a steady brake pressure without modulating the brakes. Inboard and outboard brakes have accumulator pressure only. Both thrust reverses normal pressure inoperative. Thrust reverses will deploy and retract at a slower rate. Nose wheel steering inoperative. Do not attempt to taxi the airplane after stopping. Checklist complete except deferred items. Um, when we complete the descent checklist, remember auto brake off, landing data BRF 15 or BRF eyes. Go around procedure review. Do the normal go around procedure except advanced thrust to go around smoothly and slowly to avoid excessive pitch up. Be prepared to trim. Limit bank angle to 15 degrees when air speed is less than the minimum maneuver speed. And then we complete approach checklist. And here we go again with the alternate flap extension. We already read this before. Uh, here you have it to review it if you want. Same with the manual gear extension. What we have to do. The additional deferred items. Ground proximity flap inhibit switch again flap inhibit. Now, landing checklist. Speed brake. Down detent. Flaps, remember 15 green light. So here we have uh, an extract of the FCTM. I just want to read this for you guys, what it says about hydraulic uh, malfunctions. And it also talks about the manual reversion. So it says proper planning of the approach is important. Consideration should be given to the effect the inoperative systems has on crosswind capabilities, out of flight, Stabilizer trim, control response, control field, reverse thrust, stopping distance, go around configuration and performance required to reach an alternate airfield. So, so many things to keep in mind. Hydraulic system inoperative, landing. If the landing gear is extended using manual gear extension, the gear cannot be raised. Trailing edge flaps can be extended or retracted using the alternate electric system. However, the rate of flap travel is significantly reduced. Leading edge devices can also be extended using the alternate system, but they cannot be retracted. If system B is lost, or both system A and B are lost, the applicable non-normal checklist recommends the use of flaps 15 to improve go-around capabilities. With flap 15, the airplane may tend to float during the flare. Do not allow the airplane to float. Fly the airplane onto the runway and at the recommended point. If nose wheel steering is inoperative and any crosswind exists, consideration should be given to landing on a runway where braking action is reported as good or better. Braking action becomes the primary means of directional control below approximately 60 knots where the rotor becomes less effective. If controllability is satisfactory, taxi clear of the runway using differential thrust and brakes. Continued taxi with nose wheel steering inoperative is not recommended due to airplane control difficulties and heat build up in the brakes. Okay, so it has really good information there, uh, the FCTM. Now, if we talk about manual reversion with both hydraulic systems, a and B inoperative, the ailerons and elevators are controlled manually. A noticeable dead band will be observed in both of these controls. High control forces are required for turns and the control wheel must be deliberately returned to the aileron neutral position. Both electric and manual trim are still functional. Do not over trim. The airplane should be trimmed slightly no up 
and a light forward pressure held on the control column to minimize the effects of the elevator dead band. The rotor is powered by the standby hydraulic system. Caution must be exercised not to over control the rotor. Note, the standby rotor includes a yaw damper which aids roll control handling qualities in the aileron dead band area during manual reversion. Okay, let's uh, keep an eye on this uh, paragraph here. It says, fly a long straight in approach. Keep thrust changes small and slow to allow for pitch trim changes. Landing configuration and approach air speed should be established on the runway center line, so that only a slight reduction in thrust is required to achieve the landing profile. Do not make a flat approach. Anticipate that the airplane tends to pitch down as, as thrust is reduced for touchdown. To help reduce the pitch down tendency, trim a slightly nose up on approach and initiate the flare at a higher than normal altitude. Although trimming during the flare is not normally recommended, the high control column forces required during landing in this situation can be reduced by adding a small amount of no soft trim during the flare. After touchdown, thrust reverses operation is slow. Apply steady brake pressure since only accumulator pressure is available. Do not apply excessive forward pressure to the control column. Excessive forward pressures without the speed brakes deployed can result in less weight on the main gear and reduce braking capability. Do not attempt to taxi the airplane after stopping because the accumulator pressure may be depleted or close to being depleted. If a go around is required, apply thrust smoothly and in coordination with the stabilizer trim. Rapid thrust application results in no sub pitch forces. So we have many things to think about when uh, we have a hydraulic malfunction, uh, like uh, abnormal landing configuration is always possible. Some systems are uh, slow to operate. Um, there is a high uh, flight crew workload, as you can see when we read the checklist. There is increase in landing distances. Uh, thrust reversers are uh, slow to operate. The airplane may have limited uh, flight control Nose wheel steering could be inoperative. Uh, the crosswind capability is reduced. And you could also have fire due to a hydraulic fluid leak. So many things to think about uh, when you have a situation like this one. Okay, the last uh, two checklists I just want to mention here, and you can read them in the QRH if you have it, is uh, the low pressure for the standby system. Condition, the standby hydraulic pump pressure is low. Note, with the loss of hydraulic system A and B, the rotor is inoperative. Low quantity, condition, the standby uh, hydraulic quantity is low. Continue, normal operations. Okay, guys, so this uh, completes our hydraulic system presentation. I hope this presentation is useful for you. As always, please, I'm open to any suggestions. You can leave them in the comment section uh, below. If you like this video, please share it and uh, give me a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed to my channel please do it now that's going to help me a lot to grow this channel so hopefully i'll see you guys again next week with a new system